and every single one of you came here because you believe in Allah. You see, I know there's some of you probably here, like the brother mentioned earlier, Khattab and Abu Sufyan, you came here with the wrong intentions. You might have just wanted to jump on the bandwagon because your boy told you to come. You might have wanted to do above and beyond to impress your boy that's with you. Or might come and take a couple clips to put on social media. I don't condone it myself personally. Yeah? I don't post my own stuff. But I'm asking you, bro. Every Android and every iPhone, iOS has what? Has an update on a regular basis, right? So I'm asking you now. When was the last time you updated your heart, bro? When was the last time you updated your character and your manners? Because we're all so busy to make sure that that iPhone is plugged in, is connected to Wi-Fi, in order for it to be updated overnight. But Akhi, what was you doing while your iPhone was being updated? Was you thinking about yourself? Was you thinking about waking up and praying the third night, or the third part of the night? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes to the lowest of heavens and He looks at the servants and that's you and I. And Allah says, listen to this, and Allah says, which one of my servants are calling out to me? Which one of my servants is wanting feet from me? Because for indeed I will give them what they ask for. None of us is hardly doing this, bro. And one of the situations that we're suffering from in this community, and I'm so sorry to even remind this of the brothers, yeah, and especially the uncles and the grown ups that are here. But what's ruining in our community, it's not just the drugs, it's not just the music. And I'm going to get into the drugs and the music because this is something that's killing our community regardless. But we, we are sick and tired of it. The community is sick and tired of it. But if you are the man, and I have this many, many times, brother saying, Akhi, I know there's a lot of Muslim rappers that are becoming famous because of the music scene. Akhi, it's not for us to do, bro. I may know rappers myself personally. Advise them. The imam around us advises them. That's their trial and tribulations. But you yourself come from a good home. You have a mother and a father that care for you. You've got someone that actually goes out of their way to make sure that you've got food on your table. And at the very same time, you've got a mother that's at home to make sure that you, as a man, Akhi, I'll do it myself. Let's be real. When we go in the shower or when we change our clothes, what do we do with our clothes, bro? We just throw it on the floor. We are so lazy not to even put it in the basket right next to it, but we decide to leave it on the floor. That's how lazy us men have become. And my wife gets irritated with this. My mother used to get irritated with this, including my sisters. And this is something that we never change little things inside the household. At the very same time, when I mentioned to you one of the things that's rooted in our community, Zahi, is pornography. Allah is my witness. Wallahi. Nearly every single event that I go to, there's people contacting me about pornography. Akhi, how do I stop watching pornography? Married men are coming out and saying they, start, uh, they watch pornography, bro. These are meant to be men of our ummah. You are meant to be the men of our ummah. But every single person is acting like a boy, bro. Including men with lahya. Including myself. Where does that get us, bro? Let's be real with ourselves. Stop lying to yourself thinking that you have an impact on the ummah. Of course you do, but it's in a negative manner. Where's the positive side, bro? Why are we not benefiting the ummah? Every single one of us wants to make a difference. Wants to change. Akhi, what about the change within your souls? Akhi, it took me a very, very long time to change. Ra. <laughs> Ra, who is a jinn up in here? <laughs> May Allah bless you. Who is working? Alhamdulillah. And, some of us are laughing at Allah. <laughs> and I always say this to myself, my dear respected brothers, yeah? And the uncles and the elderlies. Understand that we appreciate that every single uncle that comes from this community. I've heard a lot of stuff about this community. And I heard they care about the youth. But the thing is, yeah, you yourselves, the youth, the youngsters, the man them here, are the ones that are neglecting coming to the masjid. You're neglecting to come to the house of Allah in order for you to please the man them. Let's be real, Ak. Now, your boy told you, Ak, we got some weed around the corner. Let's roll up a zoo. You'd rather go with him. Instead of coming to the house of Allah, 
The man will tell me, Akhi, Qasmi, bro, let's go to the shop. We need to buy some vape. Let's be real with ourselves, Akhi. This is what's happening. And at the very same time, my bro, Akhi, we've seen grown men, Wallahi, come in here. Me and the brother, we were gobsmacked. We see our old auntie driving her Merc. Allahumma barik. Old. In her car, she's vaping. MashaAllah, she's bringing her O's, <laughs> Akhi. <laughs> Me and the brother looked at each other straight away without saying a word. Man started playing footsies, but with our fingers. We didn't know what to say. I have a, we were so shocked. In your community. These are happening in your community. But I'm going to say something to the outdoors, and I'm going to say this to the community leaders, yeah? If there is no unity amongst the adults, and there's no unity amongst Muslim leaders and different masajid. Understand there will never be unity amongst the youth. It is you that has to show unity upon the Quran and your Sunnah to your best of your ability. I mean, there's no wishy washy, bro. There's no one for in, one for out. And I know people, Akhi, I know people that came and built a masjid. They literally built a masjid with good intentions. And the moment they have different of opinions on one hadith, they become the worst of enemies. You know what the man does? He goes across the road and builds another master to rub it in the face of his brother. And this is what's happening in our communities, bro. Different of opinions based on one hadith. Is it weak? Is it strong? Who is it by? Who is it with? All of these things are having an impact on the Muslim ummah. When there's disunity. But like I said to you, bro, the drug dealing needs to stop in this community, bro. You know us, man, from London. You know when we hear Burnley? Akhi, it burns my heart when I hear Burnley, bro. Burnley are burning your own hearts, Akhi. Burnley, they call it a crack town. I'm going to tell you how it is, bro. A majority of the people of Burnley are actually Muslims. We did our own research. Majority of the people in Burnley, I think it's like 60, 40 or something, yeah? While doing it. And nearly every single man that is getting arrested for severe crimes is a Muslim in your community. Where have we failed? Where have we gone? But this is what happens because in there's an ayah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He says, وَلَا تَقُولُونَ كَالَّذِينَ نَصُوا اللَّهِ فَأَنْسَاهُمْ أَنفُسَهُمْ do not be like those that forgot Allah. For indeed, Allah will make you forget yourself. And how do you forget yourself, bro? You turn to anything and anything other than the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallah al azim you turn to drug dealing in order for you to please the people and not the creation. I mean, not the creator. You order to go and chase gal. As now, now man, them chase, oh, above man, man, chasing nash, or whatever you may call it. Let's be real, Akhi. let's come with the terms now, bro. I'm speaking your language, so understand me where I'm coming from, bro. Man, they are chasing the gal. When in reality, Akhi, there's another man chasing your sister. And yet, you want to be a bad boy now, thinking you can go and carry a knife and stab your brother. And just yesterday, when I did my little research about every single stabbing that happens between brothers, majority of it is because of a girl. The two Yemeni brothers in Sheffield, they went out of their way. Akhi, a hafiz of the Quran, one of them. I don't know about the other one. But one of them was a hafiz of the Quran. Went out of his way in order for him to get himself killed. And I know he went out of his way because I did my little research. But we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant him the highest ranks in Jannah. But look at the beauty of this brother. Hafiz of the Quran. And his father used to make him read one juice a day. One juice a day before leaving the house. And look at the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that was with him. He left, but he didn't return back home. He returned to his real home. And you know where that is, my brothers? The grave where you're six foot under. And many of you think that you're going to ride bang up in, in, in your grave. But there's no bunk beds in your grave, my bro. There's only bunk beds in your cell or in your room if you share a bunk bed with your brother. So I'm going to ask you again, uh, I'm going to ask you again, my dear respected brothers. What's making you go other 
than pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah told you clearly in the Quran that shaitan is your open enemy. Akhi, the Imam could come to me right now and says to me, my bro, this is a man that curses the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is a man that is a kafir. He goes and hurts people. I be like to the Imam, Jazakallah khairan, and I would still take him out for a meal. Would that make me wrong? Huh? Did that make me wrong? Of course you will make me wrong, bro. <laughs> Akhi, I'm going against someone that disobeys Allah, that curses, that curses the Prophet, that does every filthy act under the sun, and on top of that, he, he might be an Islamophobe. So we know he's our open enemy. Right? That's it. He's our open enemy, right? Yep. Wow, mashallah, a lot of brothers in this, in this house is a bit uh, mute or something. Akhi. Don't you man know how to speak? I'm asking you again, is that right? Yeah. Alas, Baba shook his head. Are you alright, brother? Yeah, I'm drinking water. Oh, you're drinking water? water. Down, yeah. We have to shake your head yeah, to yeah, swallow. Yeah, yeah And a big fat burger outside. So. Allahumma <laughs> bar. Hey, take me to that burger joint, Akhi. Yeah? We'll do definitely. Make sure, Habibi. Nobody. He's our open enemy. So if Allah directly told you, Yabna Ya Ibn Adam, Akhi, listen to this. I beg of you, I beg of you, yeah? That shaitan is your open enemy. But shaitan will stand in front of, uh, in front of Allah in Yawm Al-Qiyamah while he's chilling. Akhi, remember, shaitan's going to be in eternity in Jahannam. Eternity. There's no going back from it, bro. There's no going back in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showering him with his mercy. Shaitan will tell you, my bro, for every sin you've committed, Allah will never forgive you. And guess what, Ak? Shaitan's telling you, guess what, bro? I am the leader of Jahannam. So guess what? I'm going to make sure your time is at least easy. A man they're thinking, yeah, this is right, bro. We're going to go to Jahannam. We're going to kick it back. And we're going to enjoy our time to our best of our abilities. <coughs> but Shaitan is telling you that in order for you, in order for you and for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower you with your mercy, you must disbelieve. And in your last moments after every single sin that you have committed, Shaitan will say to you, there is no going back. Allah would never forgive you. He would never forgive the fact that you destroyed so many homes due to drug dealing. He would never forgive you because you made a girl pregnant. Or you've fallen into zina. Or you've decided to rob from your parents. Or you've decided to hurt your parents. And this is something that's happening here as well. So my brothers, and I'm going to say this to the Imam, and I'm going to say this to the brothers that are with me. My bro, I'm going to be real with you, bro. Let me back off this. I'm going to be real with you. If you are a man, and you raise your hands on your parents. Allah is my witness. And I'm going to say this in front of the Imam out of respect for him. Allah is my witness. I'm a person who break your jaw. Amen. Allah is my... Allah, I mean to that, bro. I don't have a mother to go back to, bro. But you got a mother to go back to. And this is something that this, can't, this community, Burnley, is suffering from, bro. That there's brothers in this community. I don't know. I do not know if you're here. But God forbid if you are here. And if you're man enough, you'll come forward, bro. After the event. And instead of you trying to G-check your mum, let me come and show you what real G-checking is, bro. Because the brothers that I'm around, actually they've done life. They know how it feels to take a man. And they're with me here today. So they will put you in your place. And I can guarantee. And I'm not telling you they're here to take your life. But I'm telling you, they would go above and beyond to know that wallahi, if a man's disrespecting his mother, they're disrespecting my mother. So let's be real with ourselves. You think you're a bad boy? Come forward, Akhi. Our parents are suffering. Our parents are suffering. The mothers that I come with, Akhi, from Sheffield, six mothers came forward, bro. Six mothers came forward and every single one of them is being hurt. And one of them was by a 14-year-old boy. Is anyone above 14 years old? 14 and over, put your hands up, yeah? You know you're 40, but you don't know that. <laughs> it's alright, it's alright, it's alright. We don't need you doing ad libs, Akhi. Man's doing ad libs like it's a music song. That's Akhi. So, my dear respected brothers, yeah? Majority of you here is over 14 years old. And imagine if it's you that falls into this when you are getting onto your mother and G checking and hurting her because of what? Because you're going out of your way to say, Mum, the mandem around me are getting Canada goose. 
The man in Marami are wearing a Gucci, Gucci, what's it called again? Pouch. Yeah? The man in Marami got the Gucci belts. So if you don't provide it for me, mum, hold that. And the mother is suffering, bro. The mother, wallahi, she says to me, there's times where she don't even consume food to make sure that her kids, the same child that is beating her up, to make sure that that same child is the one that has food in their stomach. So let me tell you about the times where your mother carried you for nine months, bro. Nine months she carried you. And when she gave birth to you, she fell in love with you the moment she laid her eyes on you. When was the last time you laid your eyes on your mother and said, you know what, I really love this woman. I really care for this woman. The same way she cared for me. You know what, let me be merciful towards this woman the same way she was merciful to me by feeding me, clothing me, breastfed me, ya akhi. Breastfed. You were breastfed. And you have the audacity to go against the same mother that carried you for nine months. And this was happening. So tell your friend to tell a friend. Let it make sense. If you know that friend is the one that's raising their hands on their parents, Akhi, come forward with him as well. And we're not here to hurt you. We're here to let you know what you're doing is wrong. But if you think you can continue with your arrogance, Akhi, your jaw and your fingers are getting broken. Man thinks Islam is all about peace, my bro. Islam, when it comes down to it, Akhi, we show them our real face, Akhi. You feel me? We don't take nonsense from no one. We don't let people walk all over us. Yes, we're humbled by this. But if it comes, and I remember there was a brother around us. We went to, a, we went to someone last week, two weeks ago, astaghfirullah, yeah? We went to someone, Akhi, this is a man that wanted to take his shahada for years. He's been watching Muslim and Islamic videos, you name it. I went into his shop to get a suit. And you know I look good in that suit, yeah? For those of you that watch my story, you know what I got, yeah? I would have been kidding like term, but I my khalaq. No evil eye, yeah? So I went to grab a suit now. The brother says to me, I'm scared of becoming a Muslim because I don't want to tell my family. Colombian, Akhi. Colombian, is it Colombian or Cuban? Colombian. Colombian. Colombian brother, we went in there. Akhi, we started to talk to him and he said to me, I'm not ready to take my shahada today. So give it another week. I said to him, Akhi, we don't rush this. You're not pressured. Islam don't pressure you, Akhi. So the man, I came back next week to actually collect my suit. The brother says, no, sir, I walked in there. The lady goes, he just left. Let me call him. Call the brother. The brother comes back into the shop. The brother said, yeah, amen. I am ready to take my shahada. Colombian, bro. We took his shahada. Alhamdulillah wa ta'ala In his shop He didn't want to be known So he didn't want to do no camera stuff I don't want to do it as well Akhi, as soon as we left Later on that day He went on the train with his mother And on that train Akhi, We found out that the couple Man, he told us this He said, look how shaitan Tested him straight away The moment he took his shahada The very same day Later on he jumps on the train with his mother And then he gets moved to they tried to take mockery out of his mother. And they tried to, when he felt like there was going to become physical with his own mother, he decided to defend himself and his mother and beat up those boys. Akhi, that whole night, he was ringing me, ringing me, ringing me for some reason. I don't know why I never asked him. Maybe I was doing a talk. Wallahu a'lam. A few days later, I answered the phone. I said, bro, what's up? What happened? He goes to me, bro, this is, this is the situation. Will Allah forgive me? I feel bad, bro. I shouldn't have oppressed them. I shouldn't have beaten them up. I said, Subhanallah, you've just become a Muslim for a few hours. And this is the mindset that you have. You feel like you've already oppressed people. This is a man that just took his shahada, bro. The man that doesn't hardly know anything about Islam. Now, I'm going to ask you now. Are you someone that is oppressing people? Are you someone that's going out of way? You're oppressing yourself? Are you really that person? Because you smoking and bunning and doing every act under the sun, including zina, Akhi, that's you oppressing your son. Uh, I'm sorry, you're oppressing yourself. <coughs> and not just that, Akhi, you're oppressing your son and your daughter and your wife. And this is the situation that we're falling into. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back a few years now. And I remember the day that my mother, and this is, and this is a story that's very dear to me, because this is the day where my mother saved me from doing a murder case. 
And this is the situation where me and my boy, we got involved in a little bit of uh, problems with a couple of my enemies. And we hear an ambulance, or sorry, we hear sirens, but we little did we know it was an ambulance, we started running away from the enemies. In that process of running away from my enemies, actually it resulted in me and my boy saying, we're going to go to their block and we're going to do them in. We're going to get someone, actually we're going to deal with them. We feel embarrassed, we were outnumbered. We're not going to take this violation from the ops. Spoke to my boy, my boy goes, let's go. On our way there, my mother calls me and says to me, Amen, you need to come home. Your sister's bed has arrived, you need to put your sister's bed together. I said, Mom, leave me alone. Give me an hour. She goes, no, you need to come home right now. I said, Mom, please, for the sake of Allah, leave me alone, I'll come back. She goes, I'm not taking no for an answer. I said to my boy, Akhi, give me an hour, let me go do the bed, then I'll come back. Akhi, as I've done that, I'm looking at six o'clock news, little did I know, my friend that I was with decided to ride out by himself. He went to their block. And Akhi, I'm looking at the news because my brother called me and I'm looking at six o'clock news, there's been a murder that's happened. A few moments later, my boy calls me and goes to me, Amen, I've done it. I said, what did you do, bro? Because actually, I put a knife in his back while I was chasing him. What made you do this? He said to me, Akhi, we know the guy. The guy that he killed was actually in my class. You understand? I knew, I knew the boy. But this boy jumped on the bandwagon to make sure he helps out his friends. And this is what happens when you have bad company around you. So he jumped on the bandwagon. While jumping on the bandwagon, Akhi, my boy already told him, bro, fall back. Fall back. We, know we ain't got beef with you. You go to the same school as us. But he wanted to jump in. Uh, he wanted to jump on the bandwagon. Swan at my boy with a snooker cube. My boy missed it. I mean, so he missed my boy. My boy ended up chasing him. Stabbed him once or twice in the back. As my boy ran away, Akhi, this is Sydney Hashi, 2010. As my boy ran away, remember this is 2010, you know. This is what, 13 years ago. So we were really on the streets from them times, 09, 08. And you lot, man, some of you wasn't even born. Billah. Anyone that is born in 2000 and, yeah, you're finished. <laughs> you might need help, Akhi. you might need some milk. Akhi. You know what I'm saying? Allahumma barik. As this was happening, Akhi, the brother was, I mean, the guy that got stabbed in the back was crawling across the road. Guess who was in the chicken shop getting the takeaway, my guy? His mother and baby sister. He crawled into the shop not knowing his mum and the baby sister was in the shop. And in that moment, he died in their arms, in the chicken shop. And now when I look at his mum and his sister that's all grown up, Akhi, I don't know how to address them. How do I give my condolences? Because this could have been me on that same case, but my mother saved me from a murder charge. A charge. And this goes for every single one of you. And I know, Akhi, I've been there. The phone's ringing, Akhi. I'm looking at the phone, and I'm like, oh, here we go. Why is she calling me? Why is my dad calling me? Let him continue with his Ubering, or let her continue with her cooking. And this is very, very disrespectful. But I've been there. I've done it. And we neglect our parents' phone call. Akhi, I wish, Wallahi, I wish I had one more phone call that said my mother is calling me. My world is calling me. My backbone is calling me. My best friend was my mother. I wish I could have that, bro. And you know every single one of you have that now. Because your best friend in this dunya is your mum and dad. And the only way to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this dunya is not just following the Quran and the, sun and the sunnah. Is by obeying your parents. Pleasing your parents is what pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And obeying your parents is what is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I'm going to tell you this now. You're going to go home today. I don't give a damn who's with you. I don't care who traveled with you. You're going to go home today. You're going to maybe get a bucket of warm water. You're going to place your mother's feet in the bucket of warm water and massage her while washing it. Because every single step that she took while you was pregnant, you know what I'm saying, while she was pregnant with you in her stomach, understand, yes, 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 I made a mistake, relax, relaxation, relaxation. Brothers want to crop it out and go online and say, look what Aki Eamon said. <coughs> Dusty spinners. <bro. laughs> We're better than that. We're better than that. And this is another thing is, yeah, 
If you believe in Allah on the last day, you would not concern yourself with anything that's got nothing to do with you. And this is the way of a Muslim today, where every single one of us decides to, whatever video is coming out, against anyone, we decide to comment. I can tell you this, my dear respected brothers and sisters, yeah? I don't care about who's refuting me. I don't care. When I've got Allah on my side. Akhi, you know when some people go, oh, so-and-so decided to refute a rap. Who's that? I don't care. Who is he? Or who is she? It don't bother me. Their, their whole life is nullified, Akhi. I don't care about them. And this is the same thing you shouldn't care about. But the only person that you should care about regarding defending with your honor, with your dignity and your blood, is the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And like I said to you, we don't condone in beef. We don't condone in uh, violence. But there is times where people need to be put in their place due to what? Due to violence, bro. A man will only learn if he puts, his, if, if, if he puts himself in that position where he's getting moved to. That's the only way he will realize. And let me tell you about a man that was drug dealing, bro. From an Asian background. I'm not, I'm not going to mention the country because I'm going to get moved to. But I've got my marshal, I've got the Warner here, I've got the Mandems, Khattab and Abu Sufyan. We're ready. And I've got the Imam. Akhi, you don't want the Imam to take out the stick. <laughs> and I'm not talking about Moses' stick. <laughs> Allahumma barik. Alhamdulillah wa ta'ala, this brother came to me and the Imam, he told me that his brother is actually drug dealing to the level where he's got drugs inside the household. So do you know what the brother done to him, Akhi? The brother got a few brothers around that I'm not going to say if I was involved. Yeah? I wasn't involved. Let's just make it clear. Wallahi, I wasn't involved. Yeah? But maybe I was involved in other stuff regarding advising him not to go ahead with it. But he done it anyway. Actually, they decided to kidnap his own brother from Northwest London. Kidnapped his own brother. Put him in the car. Actually, they took him to the woods and they stripped him. And they slapped him up, they punched him up, they did this. And then you know what they done at the end? They showed him videos of his mom and baby sister. And said, look at your family. We know where you live. Do you understand? Little did he know, it's the brother that's slapping him up. It's actually his older brother. Yeah? Little did he know. Or little did the brother realize he thought his brother was going to go raggle. What happened to him? Ah, he came back home. Allah is my witness. The brother said to me, he flushed all the drugs down the toilet. He went and kissed his mother. And he kissed his baby sister because he was fearful of what's going to happen to his family. And in that moment, that was his change. And I'm not telling you, let's go kidnap brothers, bro. <laughs> we're going to be out there. Akhir. We're never going to finish if we're about to kidnap everyone to teach them a lesson. But the situation that we're failing in right now in the Ummah, yeah, and like I said to you, one of them is pornography, one of them is the music, one of them is the zina and this and that. Akhi, I know you're young. And I know you're attracted to girls. And if you're not attracted to any other girl, Akhi, the door's over there, we don't condone it. Do you understand? This is not for us. But Akhi, Islam came with wisdom. There was a brother that we went to in our talk with Sheikh Uthman ibn Farooq. While I'm giving the Q&A, a brother messaged in the, in the chat saying, and, and none of you laugh at this, by the way, yeah? None of you laugh at this. For the, for, for the sake of Allah, control yourself, Akhi. It's not a joke. A brother contacted saying, I find myself being attracted to other men. Ah, oh, you man are finished. <laughs> you man are finished. I'm being real, Akhi. This is not funny, bro. Because this is something that we're suffering from our communities, bro. A lot of people are going down that path. And a lot of people, wallahi, a lot of people are the ones that go to that boarding school. I'm not going to be around the bush, bro. It happens a lot in London. Whether you like it or not, actually. They go down this avenue of being attracted to other men. So we said, may Allah bless you, brother. He said he hasn't committed any acts. He is scared that he falls into it. Because he is attracted to men. We advise him, brother. Akhi, come forward. Come towards us so we can speak to you. Akhi, we do try, but he never came forward. But Sheikh Uthman ibn Farooq mentioned that, Akhi, this is, this is what a real man is. A man that knows that this is his desires. And it's not a sin until 
you do the act. It is not a sin. We can have thoughts in our head to commit a sin. It is not a sin until we perform the act. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not punish you based on that. Because if he did, bro, ah, akhi, we're finished. Every single one of us, due to what we have in our heads, based on the filthiness we have in our heads, akhi, we're all done. But Allah doesn't punish us. Look at the mercy of Allah. But this brother came forward and told us, and Sheikh Uthman al Farooq said, that some of, one of the reasons why people go down this path is because they are far away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are far away from the Qur'an. And what's encouraging them is the people around them. Is the brothers around them, Muslim or not. This is what's happening. And I remember that same guy, uh, so another guy contacted me, and he's a very good close friend of mine. Akhi, he said to me that his brother said he's going to take his own life at the age of, in his 30s. I'm not even going to mention it because I know some people would know who I'm talking about. At the age of 30, on his birthday, he's going to take his own life. I said to the brother, do I have your permission to use this as a story? Because this is something that our community is suffering from, especially Burnley, bro. Burnley and Derby is one of the biggest communities when it comes to suicide. Why, bro? As Abu Sufyan once mentioned, why does it take myself to come to your community when your imams are all waiting for you, bro? Whatever you're going through, Akhi, come forward and talk to us. Whatever you're suffering, Akhi, come forward and talk to us. I don't care if it's to do with your wife. I don't care if it's to do with your mom and dad. I don't care if it's to do with your business or your, or, or your work. Akhi, come forward and talk to us, my guy. You are a Muslim. And we are a Muslim together. We care for you. Do not let the shaitan distract you from thinking that Allah will not show you mercy in order for him to do what? Akhi, for you to take your own life. And you're going to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the same way you killed yourself. And this brother decided to consume, decided to consume every single substance you can think of, every drug, every alcohol, and also injected himself and died and returned back to Allah. On his birthday, I went to go and see the mum. The mum was in bits. And you would say to her auntie, don't worry, everything's going to be alright. And you know what the mum said? And wallah, it hurts because I can, I can visualize her face right now. The mother said, I feel like I have failed as a mother. So I'm going to ask you now, bro. For every drug deal that you do and for every knife that you carry to go and stab someone. And for every girl that you sleep with. Do you think your mother's proud of it? Do you think your mother's actually proud of it? Because you're taking this away like it's a something like. My bro, you do not want to return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while committing these filthy acts. You don't want to do that. And by Allah, I understand, Akhi, I understand we have the fitna of women. But by Allah, if you focus on free relationships in your life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make every single thing easy for you. Financially, mentally, physically, verbally, spiritually, Akhi, you mentioned it, Allah will make it easy for you. The three relationships, Akhi, is your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and whatever comes with it. That's your relationship with Allah. The relationship with the Quran. That's relationship with the Sunnah. That's your relationship with the companions. That's your relationship with the, the tabi'een and the scholars that came after. That's your first relationship. Your second relationship, you all and every single one of us needs to be worked on, yeah, is our relationship with our family. And I'm going to tell you why. There was a time a guy came to my talk, he said, I grounded my son because I got a phone call from, my, uh, from the school telling me that my son didn't come to school. So when my son came back to school, I grounded him. No more phone, no more games. He's going to stay in his room. The only time he leaves the room is to go to the bathroom and the only time he goes to the room to go downstairs, or sorry, other than his room, is to come and have food with us. So I said to the father, so you allowed him not to come to my talk? He goes, this is the reason why. I said to him, uncle, I would like to come to your house and speak to your son. Actually, I went to his house after. See, I found out that his son didn't go to school because he was getting bullied. 
So I looked at the father, oh, Allah is my witness. I didn't know if I should slap him or not. <laughs> like, uncle, really? I've come out of your way to tell you that you never had a chance to sit down with your son and talk to him as a friend, but yet you had this authority of being a man by looking down on your son? Uncle, give me some time to talk to, my, uh, talk to your son. Because this is my little brother now. Let me talk to him. I found that the man's being bullied, bro. Every lesson he goes to, he's getting picked on. During break time, he has to hide in the toilets to make sure he doesn't get uh, picked on. What do you do with that? So I called the uncle in and I said to him, Uncle, listen to what your son has to say. The son, in his eyes, there was tears. Because he was so fearful to tell his father what's going on. Open your mouth, open your mouth, bro. Talk to your father and tell him how it is. Akhi, he's shaking. Then he tells his father, the reason why I didn't go to school today because I'm being bullied. I'm getting picked on. He started undoing his uh, shirt. I can't, I can't remember if it was a shirt or a fold that he was wearing. He started undoing it and he could show the bruises. Akhi, I said to him, look at this. When was the last time you spoke to your son as a friend? Because my mother spoke to me as a friend. 80% of her life, with my life, Akhi, she was a friend to me. Only 20% she knew when to become a mother. But she was a friend, she was a companion, she was my backbone, she was the man them. That's who my mother was, Akhi. And we did the Alhamdulillah. So I said to the father, now the father starts to cry. I don't know which one to comfort, the father or the son. I said to the father, what have you learned from this? That I should never ever show any authority when it comes to being a father first. Speak to your kids. Let them know what they're going through. And at the very same time, you should never, Akhi, I fall into this. We should never ever let our kids be scared of us to the level where they're shaking. My child, when they do something wrong, and I try to put them in their place, Akhi, what are you doing? Relax. You're not doing, ha, baba, shish. And I'm putting that fear into their souls, Akhi. And Lord, did I know it is actually the best way where someone is afflicted with jinn. One of the ways is what? When you feel scared. This is why as a Muslim, we're not even meant to watch horror movies. MashaAllah, shout out to the brother that's with me right now. This guy watches every horror movie under the sun. Yeah? And I know on the way back home, he's going to talk about another one. He needs some help. Not me, not me. Yeah. <laughs> huh? Not me. Okay, no. Yeah? And then this is what's happened. And this is what we're falling into. At the very same time, at the very same time, the brother learned his lesson. So he went forward. And now look at the relationship that he has with his son. So I'm going to ask you, my dear respected brother and sisters that are watching, I can go home and become a friend to your parents. Neglect and forget about the friend that you have outside the house. Wallahi, it will never bring you pleasure. It will never bring you happiness. And I'm going to tell you this now. Every single one, Akhi, please listen to this, yeah? If you're not a true friend, a true Muslim, I'm going to speak for the fakesters, Akhi. The, the guys that their whole life is a facade. They do nothing but lie. Akhi, I'm going to tell you this. That every single person pretends they want good for you until you become better than them. Mm. Akhi, they would support your business. They would support this clout you got. They will support your social media. But the moment you become better than them, the moment the snakes appear. And you know who betrayal comes from, Akhi? The word betrayal comes from the people that are the closest to you. Yep. You can't call your enemy, oh, that's the man that betrayed me. It doesn't make sense, but it comes with your friend. So the lessons, Akhi, that I'm going to leave with you here, and I'm going to go into some, because I had a lot, well, one of the reasons why I never spoke as much as I want to speak out of respect for the uncles because mashallah tabarakallah I, I don't know how to speak when I go uncle in front of me with the white beard out of respect I don't want to gun you man down put you man in your place because the reality is that we're failing as a Muslim you're failing yourselves and every single one of us put your hands up yeah if you still got a mom and dad yeah you still got a mom and dad Allahu Akbar Akhi would you think it's fair would you think it's fair that you believe yourself that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and listen to this as well, yeah? When the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was born, he was born without a father. His father wasn't around. 
his father died before you know he could even see him. Do you understand? That was the Prophet On top of that, actually, the first time the Prophet ever cried was when he was six years old. Can someone tell me why? Why, Akhi? Sorry? Your mother, is, Akhi, get up. Get up. May Allah bless this brother. Amen. Say Amin, brothers. Amen. May Allah make him the future, part of the future ulama in our communities. Amen. 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 And may Allah make you a hafiz of the Quran. Allahumma ameen. Because mashallah tabarakallah. How old are you, bro? How old are you, bro? What? You're 10 years old, Akhi. And only recently did I know. Akhi, may Allah bless you, Akhi. I don't want to tie it out your Yeah? May Allah bless this brother. May Allah bless this brother. Allahumma ameen. But only not, only a few years back. So when I was so jahil in my life, I only realized that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, his mother passed away when he was six years old. Me at my big age, I only realized this a few years back. This just goes to show that a man of ten years old is a man that deserves to be seen on this member, not a waste man like myself. This is a man that needs to be part of this community that you need to support. Yeah. This is a man that you need to uplift. These are your akhi, you man of the future. And wallahi, I'm going to be totally honest with you. Maybe not you in particular, but we need to grab a hold of you. Because Islam moves forward with or without you. My dear respected brothers and sisters, Allah is my witness. Allah doesn't need you. Islam doesn't need you. Allah doesn't need your five daily prayers. Allah doesn't need your zakah. Allah doesn't need your ibadah. Allah doesn't need you to please him or worship him. In order for him, no, Allah doesn't need you to glorify him. But I'm going to tell you this, Akhi. You need Allah. And you need his mercy. Because every single one of us will only enter Jannah through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. And every single one of us, we wish we stand and we will go to the prophets, other than the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when every single one of them turn their backs on us, it is only the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where he stands and he will make dua for you. And when he goes into sajda, he would not lift up his head above until every single Muslim enters Jannah. And that's your Prophet. And that's my Prophet. And it is time to rule by the same way of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Become a man, bro. I understand some of us still don't have a beard. But become a man, akhi. Becoming a man is based on your actions, not your appearance, akhi. Becoming a man is what's in here. Becoming a man is how you speak, how you react to things that come your way. Becoming a man is your manners. Becoming a man is your good character. That's what it means by becoming a man. And by Allah, Allah is my witness. The moment you push yourself to becoming a man, you'll see every single female falling into place and becoming a good woman. And we need to start with ourselves. And stop pointing fingers at the sisters, bro. But it starts with you. It starts with your households. And shout out to the family that are here in this community. Allahumma barak. Ten brothers and one sister. Ten brothers and one sister. And they got over 40 cousins. Nephews and nieces. Their slogans. Their slogans in this community. Is my son, my cousin. Uh, nephew. Son, my nephew. Son, nephew. That's all they have. And these uncles have done everything that you could think of. In order to make sure that this community is ready for you to come back to. So I'm going to ask you again, my brothers, are you ready to become a better Muslim? Some of you said inshallah, some of you said yes. I love both of the answers. And I hope it's not that I'm half hearted inshallah, you know. Uh, inshallah, just to shut me up. Like you mean it from here. You understand? Are you ready to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Yes. Yeah. Are you ready to start praying your five daily prayers? Yes. Are you ready to stop neglecting your prayers? Yes. Are you ready to please Allah? Are you ready to please the Prophet? And are you ready to please your parents? Yes. So I dare you to go back home today and start with your parents, inshallah wa ta'ala. We're going to do some questions. And Abu Sufyan is ready, mashallah. Relaxation, relaxation. I mean, huh? no, I've got uh, so I know, but I looked for you lot, you're not young, so I know somebody you're going to get married, yeah. 
So I'm going to start with a question, one of the best questions so far. I've just come out of a haram relationship. Shout out to you, bro. <laughs> That's a good thing, bro. And I want to get closer to Allah, yeah. but I know I need to get married. How do I know if I am ready to get married? My brother, you heard what I said. Allah is my witness, and I say this to everyone. If you work on them three relationships, stop for I didn't finish. The three relationships was what? Allah and whatever comes with it, correct? The second relationship was what? Family. Your family, right? You don't cut the ties of kinship. You, you, you obey your parents and so on and so forth. Guess what the third relationship is? Huh? Wife. Your wife? <laughs> <laughs> Are you married, Akhi? 17, bro. You're 17? So what, bro? Trust me, bro. <laughs> Akhi, your third relationship you need to work on is your relationship with yourself. Your relationship with yourself, Akhi. Self-discipline. Your ibadah. Akhi, you know who you are. Work on your mental and physical state. That's your third relationship. The moment you put these three into place in your life, Akhi, Allah will send you a wife. Allah is my witness. And do not ever, Akhi, do not ever think that Allah wouldn't provide for you. But approach your local imam, speak to him. Imam, I want to get married. Maybe my parents are not happy with it. Akhi, at least do the nikah. Even though you may not be in the same house. It doesn't matter. But at least do the nikah. And work towards it because Allah takes this responsibility amongst himself to say, He will, Akhi, Allah told you he will provide for you. He will provide for you. So get married, inshallah. Do not delay it. Even if you're 17 years old. So shout out to the brother. Amen can't see these questions and stuff that come free. So I'm gonna give a little side. I'm gonna tell him something now while you're here. And then I'm gonna ask him the questions. But there's a lot of brothers here singling other brothers out, making silly comments about other brothers. You know? Do you know why a lot of the time us Muslims are seen weak, that like people look at us as weak? Because everyone's against each other, like right? Brothers that are with other brothers, you should know like we're lions, we're together. No one can't have no one like that's how we are you know. If someone's saying funny comments about Amen, I'm not gonna stand here and do nothing about it. But then there's brothers singling each other out, making fun of each other. Someone's mentioning I'm not gonna say it, mentioning someone's name and saying this person's this, this person's that. Actually man, you are cowards, bro. Man. Cowards. Making fun of each other. For what? You lot are meant to be together. Community, one community, bro. Best believe, that's as soon as you know, we, we're not together. That's why I do this whole takbir thing. We've got to show that we're united as one. No one's gonna, no one's gonna mess with us if we're all one. You know, they're gonna know, yo, if I mess with this brother here, there's all these brothers here that are gonna come rise up for them. It should be like that. Why are you not singing with each other? Right? It's very childish. So the next question, I'll tell you. Just before you you, you finish, Shaki, the Prophet. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said You're not a true believer until you love for your brother or you love for yourself For if you want respect for yourself my bro You must want it for the brother that's sitting next to you And if you are a coward I think Then best believe, best believe God forbid that the brother sitting next to you is a coward But we're better than that So if you want a mansion for yourself you must love it for your brother If you want good for yourself you must love it for your brother Man, they out here coming to this talk, making sure that they've become a scan, like a barcode. Like you scan your brother to see what he's wearing, what shoes he's got, how his haircut is, to make sure how you should respect him or not. And if the brother's got a nice whip, akhi, that extra grip is going to be even better. That's not for Muslim, my boy. And wallahi, the shayateen, including the other kuffar leaders, used to go out of their way to destroy us. You know what they're doing now? They're sitting back. They're letting the Muslims destroy themselves. You are the one that's destroying yourself, bro. And you are the one that's destroying the brother that's sitting next to you. So I ask Allah right now, within your heart, to cleanse your hearts and cleanse my heart. Allahumma ameen. ameen. And if you are those brothers that are pointing out other brothers, Akhi, before you leave this masjid, pray to Ruk'ah, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you. Because this is not from a Muslim to have evil eye towards one another and putting your Muslim brother down. The companions didn't do it, so we shouldn't do it. You should appear as strong as your circle. Right. Your circle will make your make you feel your who you hang around 
will show what kind of people you are. If you if you have strong brothers around you, you will appear strong. You're right now telling Eamon that the brothers you hang around with are joke, man. Like, you can insult them too. Get in on our joke and tell them. We, we mess around too, man. But we would never get other people to say, yo, come, come, insult Eamon with me, insult him. No, he's silly. So anyways, the question for where it came from is, how do you know if you've got good brothers around you? How do you know this? Anybody that brings you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Quran, that's a good brother. And anybody that's telling you to come and sin with him in order for him to get what he wants, such as girls and weed and other drugs, actually, this is a brother that you need to take a step back from, bro. And last time I came to Burnley, there was a drug dealer amongst you, not here, decided to contact me and said that he's going to come and put me in my place. Akhi, I don't need these brothers as my bodyguards, bro. I got Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's all I could say. Umar ibn Khattab went out of his way to go and kill the Prophet. And Allah guided him, Akhi. And Allah, and guess what? He didn't care. And the Prophet Sallallahu didn't care who was at the door, bro. And Umar ibn Khattab is someone that was known that if he sat on the horse, his leg would be cool, you know, sweeping the floor, bro. And so imagine how big he was. His sword was about six foot, they said. Six foot sword, bro. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our bodyguard. And we couldn't give a damn what you bring to the table. So I'm going to ask you this, bro. If that brother that's sitting next to you, if he is the one that's bringing you closer to Islam, actually accept him and love him and care for him. And honor that brother. And if that brother is the one that goes out of his way to draw you closer to sin, it is upon you as a Muslim to step away from him. If you can't continue to advise him and he doesn't learn, actually step away from him, bro. That's it. This is my one, yeah. I'm looking at all the comments. This person deleted the comment, but it still shows them what I think. I'm not gonna, he put his name on it, so, but he deleted it because he put his name on it. But, so I'm not gonna single you out, I'll just read what he wrote. It's mad because the other questions are taking the mick out of this guy. <laughs> and this guy wrote this question, yeah? I feel like I'm around the wrong friend group. How do I distance myself? Wow, 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 wow. Don't, don't, around, like you know who it is. How, how do I get away from him? How do I distance myself? <coughs> Akhi, by just coming to the masjid. The more you come to the masjid, Akhi, this, this, this community, the more you come to this masjid, the more you fall in love with yourself, Akhi. Why? Because you start to become happy. You're in the house of Allah. You see, us, man, like I said to you, the block was the masjid. Akhi, when we used to do our stupidness on road, we'd go straight back to the masjid. That was our hub. And you know, sometimes one of the reasons why our friends kept away from me and some of my circle around me was because of what? Because they didn't like the fact that we were so happy coming to the masjid. That's when we knew who our real friends were and who's our fake friends. So that's the best way to distance yourself from them by only coming to the masjid. And I'm not telling you to start getting away from them and go to another batch. Akhi, you would find the best of brothers here. The best of brothers that worship Allah and fear Allah and come and do Islamic studies with them, it's in the masjid. That's your community, bro. Look around, Jack. Why is the masjid this packed? For a waste man like me. I can come like this for Fajr. Come like this for Dhuhr, wa Asr, wa Maghrib, wa Isha. Come here, bro. This is bad for you. This one's to the warner about Ema, so I'll quickly ask you. Right. They're saying, how, <laughs> how is it hanging around with Ema? Oh, what do you want right. to say about it? Be honest. <laughs> Be honest, if you don't like it, just say it. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. He lost his voice, yeah? <laughs> I, I lost my voice the other day because of all the takbirat. Allah, <laughs> I'm usually the loudest one in the room, though. No. But alhamdulillah, one thing I learned from being around the brothers Amen and the other brothers as well, is you know the teamwork that it takes in order to spread the message of Islam, to encourage the youth to do good and to forbid evil. Because one thing about myself, unfortunately, what I do back in LA, I do da'wah and I do it all by myself. And alhamdulillah, from being around these brothers, I learned the essence of teamwork and brotherhood. So alhamdulillah, I'm extremely grateful for this experience and I'm extremely grateful for my brothers, because alhamdulillah, they're doing amazing things 
And I'm always wishing the best for them, inshallah. Allah, Allah, Sorry to single you out there. Yeah. <laughs> it's all good. And I hope you don't mind saying, you know something that he said to me the other day, which got me a bit emotional. He, sorry, he said it to me privately, but I don't think it's singling you out. It's not so private now, is it? <laughs> but you don't mind, you don't, you see it. Basically, what he's saying is where he hangs around in America, he has no Muslim brothers around him. He hangs around, even when he speaks, I don't really like speaking to Muslims. I like speaking to non-Muslims. Muslims Muslim don't treat me right. And it's, it's sad. You lot are around Muslims every single day. But he dreams to be around Muslims like that. And literally, when he was around us, he said, Bro, I don't see the love you lot show me. And I, don't, I don't get this in America. You know? There's not many Muslims like that day. So I can count your blessings, bro, to be around a lot of Muslims. Nothing brings you and your brothers together like Islam does. Anyways, we're gonna finish up now. So brothers, if you don't wanna I need I need to go and fix my bag, you know, then I'll actually love this coming in so quickly before we go out though, if you don't wanna stand up we're gonna do a tough right so I'm gonna record it now. But brothers remember yeah Don't stand on your brothers. Yeah 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 don't fuck each other but you need to be as loud as you can come in. 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 So it needs to be loud and loud. Oh, easy! What? What's wrong with you?